Should old acquaintance be forgot? Never bought to mind. Should old acquaintance be forgot? And old lang syne. For old lang syne, my child. Randy Bullock to attempt. For old lang syne. Kick. Of kindness yet. As the Titans. Again. This week on Titans All Access, it's a hap, hap, happy new year. It may be 2022 on the calendar, but the Titans are still working to complete a successful 2021 season. General Manager John Robinson stops by to talk ball. From Jack Rabbit's interception to AJ's return, Beneath the Surface with Coach Mack covers the biggest plays from last week's Thursday Night Thriller. Plus, Morgan Cox is new to the Titans, but not new to Tennessee. The long snapper is this week's Nissan Insider. And the mayor of Murfreesboro is a pro bowler once again. But it's what Kevin Byer does away from the field that really makes him special. All of that and so much more as we ring in the new year. Coming up on Titans All Access. The monster, Derek Henry. Sam! Rashawn Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. I'm Mike Keith. Amy Wells will join me in the next segment. But to open this program, we're talking ball with Titans general manager John Robinson presented by Duncan. And John, I got to ask you first. Now, I know it's been over a week since the San Francisco game. But we haven't talked since then, so you got to tell me what jumped out to you from that big win over the 49ers. Yeah, Mike, I think it was our overall, you know, how much we stressed the keys throughout the course of the week, a short week coming off that Pittsburgh game, about taking care of the football offensively and finding ways to create turnovers on defense. We were able to do that offensively, take care of the football. We caused three fumbles. They didn't quite bounce our way, but we got two picks, which really helped push us over the edge and play really good football, especially in the second half. Bud Dupree has had sacks in back-to-back games since coming off the injured reserve. What does Dupree bring to the defense? Yeah, I think he's he's got excellent size. He's an ex, he's got excellent power. He plays hard. You know, when he gets back there, he's trying to dislodge the football. He's trying to create a turnover. He gives good chase on the backside of plays. Uh, he's strong at the point. You know, he just continues to refine the details of his game specific to his position. But he's had some really good snaps for us of late. It's great to see A.J. Brown back out there. He is so impactful. What is it about his game that adds such explosion to the Titans' offense? Well, I think he's got great chemistry with with Ryan, obviously. Ryan trusts him to throw, throw the ball to him. He's got route craft. He's savvy. He sets his breaks up really well. He's a big, strong, powerful receiver. He's really good with the ball in his hands after the catch. They either pull away from traffic speed-wise or run through tackles because he is so strong. We're certainly going to need to continue to stack those types of games together down the stretch. We've talked so much about the free agents that you signed and how successful they are fitting in. I want to talk about Morgan Cox. He's going to be our Nissan Insider later in the program. And he's a long snapper, but John, he's really a lot more than that to this football team. Why was signing Morgan Cox such a priority for you last year? Yeah, I mean, I think we were looking for a snapper. Morgan and, and Brett Kern, they, they knew each other. You know, he's from Memphis. He wanted to be a little closer to home. You know, it really worked out well for us. Those long snappers, they, they their job kind of goes unnoticed unless it's a bad snap. So you don't really notice Morgan a lot, but he's got good speed to get down the field on the coverage units. He's a smart football player. He's just a really steady presence on the special teams units for what he brings to the team. Talk to me, if you would, about these Miami Dolphins who started one and seven. They were completely left for dead, and now they're in the playoff hunt. What gives with Miami's big resurgence? Yeah, they're they're playing really good right now, Mike. I mean, I think defensively, uh, there's a lot of pressure. They you know they they blitz a lot. You know they try to cause as much disruption up front with that front seven as possible. Whether it's you know that's Wilkins, whether it's Phillips off the edge, Baker at linebacker, Roberts at linebacker. The secondary is really really good. You know with two Pro Bowlers and Jones and Howard. The safety tandem, the rookie Holland's playing outstanding football out of Oregon. 
Uh, and then offensively, you've got you know you've got weapons at receiver. You got speed at receiver with Waddle and Wilson. Uh, Jacecki at tight end is an excellent. He's a big target. Um, it's a younger offensive line that's playing pretty good, and and two is playing good football. You know he's playing good football right now and moving him down the field. Let's talk about Tunga Vailoa and what he has done in year two since he's come back from injury. Few quarterbacks in the league have been more sort of proficient at just running the offense. Where has he improved the most in year two? I think he looks more comfortable, Mike. He looks he looks poised back there. You know, he, he doesn't really get rattled. His completion percentage is up. He's thrown for 14 touchdowns. He just looks more comfortable in the offense. He doesn't get rattled. You know, he's got good arm strength. He's mobile in the pocket. He can get himself out of trouble and, and scamper for a few yards if he needs to run. But I think just his overall you know, familiarity with the offense and, and with the guys he's throwing to, it certainly made him, you know, take a step in the right direction. What do you want to see more of from your Tennessee Titans on Sunday against the Dolphins? Well, I think we got to build off that second half we had in the San Francisco game, Mike. You know, converting passes, moving the football down the field, playing complementary football in all three phases, continue to take care of the football. I think when we take care of the football, when we play smart, when we can get some turnovers and get the ball back to our offense, you know, that's our style. You know, we, we play gritty. These games are close as you get down in you know, late December as your every team's making a push for the playoffs. So if you can play clean football, you got a chance. You know, you got a chance. We want to see us continue to build off what we did in the second half. John, go get a win on Sunday and thank you. Let's do it, Mike. All right. John Robinson with us. Talking ball presented by Duncan. When we come back, Amy Wells is here. So you can stay with us because I promise she's coming next on Titans All Access. We welcome you to the Bet MGM studio once again. And as promised, Amy Wells is here. She's new to this show, but she's not new to this show. She's on every week. <laughs> well, you know who else is new to Tennessee, but not new, new to Tennessee? Who? Morgan Cox. Morgan Cox, of course. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, it's good for him to be back in a place, but he's kind of already familiar. Uh, very much so. He's from Collierville, Tennessee, just outside of Memphis. He snapped for the University of Tennessee and then went on to the Baltimore Ravens and went to four Pro Bowls. But exciting to have him back as he means a lot to the Tennessee Titans in 2021. And it's good to be back in his own part of the country. So Morgan, you spent 11 seasons with one team mm -hmm. and then you move on to a different team. How hard is it to make a change, especially when you have a job that's so regimented, so routine, right. and it's the same over and over and over and over again? Yeah, I mean, I so I was in Baltimore for 11 years, nine of which I spent with the same two people, uh, two kickers and punter. And um, yeah, we did. We had our routine every single year, spring, training camp, you know, all the way through the season and everything. It was definitely a change, but, you know, I've enjoyed getting to find a new routine with Brett and with Randy. Did you ever take a minute to think after you were informed that you weren't going to be coming back with Baltimore to be a Raven again? You know, I've won a Super Bowl. <laughs> I've, won, I've gone to the Pro Bowl. Right. I've been named All-Pro. Maybe this is it. Like, maybe I'm done. Did that thought ever occur to you? No, it really it really never did. I, I just love what I'm doing. And um, I knew that the Tennessee spot might be open. I had uh, maybe put in a word with Brett right after it happened, and I, I knew that was a possibility. Growing up a Titans fan, there's no way I could have thought about that. So, yeah. So Tennessee calls, is it an immediate yes? Or do you have to say, Maybe I'll look around, <laughs> play the field a little bit. Well, I leave that stuff up to my agent, but I know if, if it was if it was me, I definitely would have jumped on it a lot faster. But we, I think we slow played it a little bit. But but yeah, I was definitely thrilled when when we got the call and you know and that was a possibility. Who is more excited to come to Tennessee, you or your family? Oh gosh, that's a tough one. Like I said, I'd grown up a Tennessee Titans fan. You know, I, I came to uh, a game and with five of my other high school buddies and we did the Titans across our chest. It was like the middle of December. So I was a diehard fan back in the day, but my parents have come to every game. I'm, I'm two and a half hours away from, from everybody in Memphis and going to school in Knoxville. I, you know, I'm so close to everybody that I spent so much time with. So. I don't know, that's a toss up. It's gotta be good to be out of 
a kind of the Northeast and that sports world and back in SEC country, back yeah. in Vol Nation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's got to be a lot of things that just feel good about being home. I, I see a heck of a lot more power tees around town than I did up in Baltimore. There'd be the occasional one, but even now I'm still getting used to like, you know, oh, there's a power tee because like I said, for 11 years, that was such a big deal if I saw one around Baltimore. But but yeah, it does, it definitely, you know, feels like home. Now you knew Brett Kern a little bit from mm -hmm. being at Pro Bowls together. Mm -hmm. um, what made you the most excited about coming to Tennessee and being able to work with him? You know, Brett, you know, like you said, we were at a Pro Bowl together, but I've, I've followed Brett's career and just how, how great of a punter he's been in his career. I was excited to come and be able to contribute here and help the special teams here be as great as it's been in the past and help contribute as however I could. So I was excited to work with him because I'd seen how special he'd been for, for so long. What surprises you about the way that he works, maybe? I don't, I don't know. I, th I think uh, Brett's precision and his uh, attention to detail on, you know, where he, you know, where, where, where he wants to place the ball. It's just cool to do, uh, help him and, and be a part of that operation. I know you guys do a lot of research mm -hmm. on the upcoming opponent. Right. Um, is that something that a lot of specialists do, or is this kind of a unique thing that you guys do to try and help the special teams unit as a whole? I've always kind of do it. To be honest with you, I'm not sure what other people do, but uh, I do try and kind of offer my perspective on snapping because a lot of people don't, you know, they don't pay attention to snapping and it's something I kind of have an eye for, I guess. And uh, so I, I make sure and offer what I see. You know, I'm, I'm excited to con contribute as, in as many ways as I possibly can. Tell me a little bit about working with Craig Ackerman. What is yeah. his style like? How has he been able to help you maybe become a better long snapper? Absolutely. He, that's another attention to detail thing. He, he, he doesn't let me take a play off. You know, today at practice, he offered some, some coaching for how I wanted to, how I, I should have played the play. And he brings a lot of energy, a lot of excitement to the meeting room, a lot of excitement to practice, makes it, keeps it fun, keeps it light. It's a great atmosphere to, to be in, to, um, to get better in each, each day. Are you surprised by the longevity that you've had in your career? Surprise would probably be a good word for it, to be honest with you. I remember an older snapper commenting on, on me as a young snapper and, and saying that I could play 10 years in the league. And to me, that just, that seemed like an eternity. And so I was really excited about, you know, the thought of being able to play that long. But, you know, now that, you know, I'm in my 12th season now, it seems like it's just, it's been a blink of an eye at the same time. So I still feel like I can play several more years in this league and I'm excited to see what the future holds. Morgan Cox has been a great addition to Titan special teams this season. You know who else has been a great addition to the Titans and Titans radio? Who? Coach Mack, oh, Dave McGinnis. Yeah, sure. Of course, of course. Obvious. Yeah, well, he's going to help us break down some of the big plays from the Titans' victory over the 49ers. Stick around. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. Last Thursday's win over the San Francisco 49ers was full of big plays. And so we needed Dave McGinnis to help us break them down. From Jack Rabbit Jenkins interception all the way to the return of A.J. Brown, we've got it all right here on Beneath the Surface. This is Coach Mack. We're going Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. 49ers have already scored one touchdown. They're threatening in the low red zone again. Watch George Kittle. This is a switch release. George Kittle's number 85, a switch release. Jack Rabbit Jenkins does a tremendous job. They pass this off. Watch Jack Rabbit stay, get in great position. He knows exactly what the route is coming. And when Garoppolo delivers it, Jack Rabbit steps in front for a critical, critical interception in this ball game. This was a tremendous, tremendous play. Not only is reading the formation, but also putting into practice in the game what they had worked on all week. Big play for the Titans at this point in the ball game. This is the third quarter, the next interception or takeaway by the Titans defense. Watch the formation now. The 49ers gave you a lot of movement. Watch the adjustments, all of the adjustments that the Titans defense has to make on the movement. But as they do this, they also are able to get into perfect position. They know what's coming. Another great job of preparation. Watch Imani Hooker playing a post safety. Read the eyes, directional delivery key of the quarterback comes up with a big, big, big interception here in the third quarter. All of these adjustments put the Titans in a perfect position. Watch the post safety come out of the top and pick this thing off. This was a 
tremendous, tremendous boost to the Titans here in the third quarter. Score 10 10, third quarter. This is third and 22. Not an ideal situation, but watch how the Titans manipulate this situation to their advantage. First of all, hard count, get the 49ers to jump, very alert by the entire offense. Continue the play. Quarterback and receiver are on the same page. Once they get into jump, it's a free play downfield. Watch the protection. The pocket is excellent. To Tannehill's right, watch him maneuver up to his left, work up, and then launch it to A.J. Brown, who is one-on-one. This is an extremely difficult combat catch, very strong hands. A.J. Brown with a monster day. This was just one of many examples of A.J. Brown on third down coming through as a huge, huge element in the Titans offense. We're in the high red zone here. Watch A.J. Brown with a beautiful move on the outside. He is in man-to-man. Watch him stick his cornerback to the outside. Very precise, breaks it off. Excellent, excellent protection. Ryan Tannehill steps up, delivers a dart to A.J. Brown. Touchdown, Titans. This was very, very well executed, well protected. Tremendous, tremendous part in this football game as the Titans start to mount their comeback. Speaking of playmakers, one of the Titans' biggest playmakers is a pro bowler again. Kevin Byard. Yes, Kevin Byard. And while we're very excited about what he's doing on the field, it's what he does off the field and mainly what he's doing leading up to the game against the Miami Dolphins that really has us fired up. I have it right here. I'll tell you about it. From the mayor of Murfreesboro himself, Kevin Byard, when Titans All Access continues. Byard's downfield, the ball is intercepted. Intercepted Byard, 20, 10, 5, end zone! Titans have picked it up with Byard to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone! Touchdown Titans! (laughs) Kevin Byard to the house! Man, it's so fun watching highlights of Kevin Byard and especially seeing him doing Kevin Byard things again. It's so fun and it's so good to have him be a Pro Bowler again. A second Pro Bowl for Kevin Byard. Excited about that. But as great as he is on the field, he does even more special things off the field. Take a look at this. In partnership with Ashton Real Estate and the Byard Family Legacy Fund, the Titans are hosting a shoe drive for children and teens in foster care. The inaugural Nashville Kick for Kids drive will be held at Nissan Stadium when the Titans face the Dolphins this Sunday. We're asking fans to bring their new or gently used sneakers of all sizes to the drop-off locations around the stadium before entering the game. Visit NashvilleKicks.org for more information or to donate to the Byard Family Legacy Fund directly. As a way to say thank you, donors will be eligible to win a signed Kevin Byard football. Great job, Mayor of Murfreesboro and the Byard Family Legacy Fund. That's good stuff. That's really good stuff and what we expect out of Kevin Byard. And you probably got some new shoes for Christmas anyway, so donate this weekend if you're coming to the ball game. When we come back, it's time to talk how we beat the Miami Dolphins. The keys are next. Stick around. Stick around. Welcome back to Titans All Access. We're about to get to the best part of the show, Mike Keith's Keys. But before we do that, we've got to talk about the best time of the year. It is the time of the year where playoff math happens. And Mike, for as much as I love this time of year, I'm terrible with math. So I'm going to need your help. I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to tell you who to root for this weekend. No math. Just who to root for. I like that. All right, so it helps the Titans if Las Vegas beats Indianapolis, if Cincinnati beats Kansas City, if Jacksonville beats New England, if the Rams beat Baltimore, and if Denver beats the Chargers. So somebody asked me last Sunday, who should I be rooting for? Those are the five teams that if they win, it helps the Titans the most. And then the Tennessee Titans, of course, get the win over the Miami Dolphins. Well, of course, if the Titans beat the Dolphins, they are AFC South champions no matter what else happens. And I like that math a lot. That math is very simple, but it's time for our keys to beating the Miami Dolphins, presented by our great friends at visitmyrtlebeach.com. You know, one of the things that you can do in Myrtle Beach a lot 
play golf. Ooh. A lot of great golf courses. You're thinking, where am I going to go in the next couple months to play golf? Visit MyrtleBeach.com. Mike Keith, yeah. you just you read my mind sometimes. Where am I going to go play golf? There you go. That's You weren't thinking that. No. I totally was. Mike, let's get to your keys. <laughs> Key number one is let's keep that passing game going. Man, that was fantastic in the second half. 12 of 16, 154 yards, a touchdown. That looked like early in the season. Titans need to keep that passing game rolling into this game against Miami. All right, what's key number two? Key number two is you've got another wide receiver tight end challenge, just like in the San Francisco game. The rookie wideout Jalen Waddle has over 80 catches on the year and is having a great year. Dolphins also have maybe one of the most underrated tight ends in football by the name of Mike Jasicki, very talented. And so that's about the defensive backs, that's about the linebackers. Same sort of thing as they had going into the San Francisco game, a big challenge with a lead wide receiver and a talented tight end. All right, the third and final key. Play clean. That's what the Titans did best against San Francisco. Limit penalties, no turnovers, no mental mistakes. Stay on track with that. If the Titans play clean, they're going to be hard to beat. All right. Well, those are some great keys heading into the final regular season game at Nissan Stadium. The final regular season game at Nissan Stadium, indeed. And we'll remind you, it's the Titans and the Dolphins at Nissan Stadium this Sunday. Kickoff set for 12 Central. Amy Wells and Rhett Bryan have Titans Countdown on Titans Radio at 11 a.m. Check your local listings for the Titans radio station in your area. And we hope this game does not take seven hours and eight minutes like the last Titans Dolphins game did. Yeah, no, thank you. Not great. Nope. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. I'm bringing snacks just in case. You should. Mm -hmm. Or a tent. <laughs> It's the little things that make a difference, like taking time to connect with family, helping the new team member Everything feel welcome, well, thanks. and looking out for others. Thank you. This season, there's something small that makes a big difference. Flu vaccines protect the ones we love. Make a difference. Get your flu vaccine today. Learn more at tn.gov slash health slash fight flu.